Baldur's Sky is the best visual novel experience I've ever played. I would put it up there as one of the best visual novels out there with the likes of Steins Gate, Fate Stay Night, and Wonderful Every Day. I've enjoyed almost every single part of this visual novel and it's well worth the 100 plus hours I've invested into this game. Baldur's Sky is a great deep dive into this cyberpunk world filled with ideas of self-grown autonomous AI, immersive cyberspaces, genetic manipulation, and futuristic political strife where with each route that you play, it slowly builds into each other, creating an in-depth world setting and world plot. And if that wasn't enough to turn your head, it's also a fun, fast action, beat em up RPG as well. You play as Ko Katakura, a mercenary who gets memory loss from this most recent mission. In the present time, Ko and his subordinate, Rain Karishima, are after a group of scientists who caused the tragedy known as Great Christmas, who triggered a hazardous nanomachine that annihilated the city where he grew up and splitting up his friends in the past. We follow Ko as he searches for the truth behind the devastation of that fateful day and tries to prevent another Great Christmas from happening ever again. The game's story is split up between the present time and the past, as Ko begins to regain memories through flashbacks which includes key events that led up to the day of Great Christmas. As I said before, Baldur's Sky is half anime visual novel and half an action RPG mech beat em up game. Over the course of the story, you'll encounter sections where you'll have to fight a number of enemies in order to progress with the story. You have three different buttons used for attacks, and depending on your position in regards to the enemy, your attacks change. If you're close to the enemy, you'll do a close range attack, while if you're far away from the enemy, you'll do a long range attack. These attacks can be remapped to fit whatever playstyle you want to execute, whether it's getting up close and personal and doing physical combos, or using a variety of different weapons. These attacks can also be chained together to pull off ground and air combos as long as your heat gauge remains low, which can be considered your action bar. Melee combos are fun to execute, and as you unlock more attacks in the development section, you can chain these attacks together to create combos that flow into each other well. There's a multitude of different combos you can do with a large list of attacks you can unlock. It's fun, fluid, and responsive, which is a big plus in my book for these type of games. Along with unlocking new weapons and attacks in the development section, you can unlock plugins which can change your overall gaming experience, whether it's adding upgrades to your mech unit, disabling UI game elements, customizing parts of the menu, and even adding secret story plugins. However, over time when the difficulty ramps up, I began to notice that the weapons in the game aren't that effective against enemies with larger health bars, so using melee attacks ended up becoming the main way to do damage. Finding an effective combo is going to be important in the later fights and endgame bosses because trying to find an opening can be damn hard when the enemies start raining missiles and lasers upon you or my personal favorite, comboing you to death. There's some particular enemy compositions that make me want to pull my hair out and Eyes of Wolves are actually the worst type of enemies. Even on normal difficulty, the game still kicked my butt at some times. The shotgun and the SMG became my most used weapons in the whole game because of how useful they were to execute and whittle down health. By the time I reached the 4th route, I had a consistent combo that used all of the buttons and could take down a 2 health enemy bar with a full combo. In regards to the actual visual novel experience, there are 6 routes in the game. Rain, Nanoha, Chinatsu, Aki, Makoto, and then the final true route. What's great about Baldur's Sky is that it uses the visual novel format to its advantage. As you play through each route, each story builds off of each other, filling in details. So, while major plot concept is minor in one particular route, turns out to be the main focus of another route. For example, in one route we get to know the events of Great Christmas, while in another route we know about the actual nano machine that destroyed the city. And as we progress through the story, it adds up into the larger plot of Baldur's Sky, which works really well because it feels as we the player are actually gaining these story memories along with Ko, and by the time we reach the very end, the story leaves very little plot threads open, if any, and wrapping everything up in a nice little bow. There are usually three different endings for each route, a bad end, a normal end, and a true end. There are some choice decisions that affect which ending you get, and it's pretty easy to get the true ending if you can for basic anime plot beats. Example being, if given a choice whether you should give up or keep going, you should probably keep going. Other factors that go into play are the actions you take in a key fight, usually if you lose the fight or run out of time, but these events are very few in the story. That said, while the way to unlock the bad end is actually pretty easy, it's the normal ending that takes a bit of effort to get to. What I noticed pretty early on is that in order to fully clear all of a character's endings and have it registered in your save progress, you need to replay that same route but choose the alternate ending. All of your inventory, such as plugins obtained, carry over with each save. This means you can't go complete one ending and then go back to a previous save file and view the alternate ending. You won't get those plugins you got from completing that first ending the first time. 
And at the very end of the game, you finally unlock the ability to use the Scenario Jump Plug, which allows you to jump between parts of the stories with all of your plugins and points. So you can use this to see those endings. I didn't know that. So I ended up playing through the routes over and over again to unlock all of the endings. This is also connected to a personal complaint with all this guy, because sometimes I just wanted to read the story and not do any mech fights, or have the option to skip mech fights in general as it cuts the story pacing. Rain Karishima is the first heroine you meet in the game and acts as our guide as we deteriorate from an experienced and skilled mercenary into a bubbling awkward high school student. Her route serves as a beginning introduction into the dystopian world of Baldur's Sky, but is still a sufficient self-contained story and characterization for Rain herself. By the end of Rain's route, there's a core intrinsic moment that links both the past and the present together, but having to balance both, in addition to trying to understand the setting, diminishes Rain's own character story. With all the backstory and newfound technology that the plot establishes, the beginning starts off very slow and it's hard to get accustomed to everything that the story dumps on you, and having Ko constantly cut the flashbacks was my least favorite part of the game. And yet, ironically enough, by the game's third route, I was actually missing those peaceful happy days. In the game's second route, the game focuses on Nanoha, a dependable childhood friend, and it's at this point that the story begins to pick up. It's probably one of my most favorite routes, totally going all in on the childhood friend trope and childhood promises. What makes this even better is that while you have an idea of what's going on, there's still details missing from the big picture, which creates this great conflict of trying to figure out who to trust and wondering who's right and who's wrong. Especially with the antagonists of this route, adding morally great motives to further complicate the situation. As you can probably tell from the previous routes, everyone has been affected seriously by the events of Great Christmas. But the person who has been affected the most was Chinatsu. Being Chinatsu is the glorified version of everything's changed, it's been X years since this event happened, and things are serious business now. And Baldur's Sky shows this immediately when you first see her. Something clearly happened, and after hinting at it in the previous route, we dive deep into it. While generally you can get a large feel of the technological world that they live in, Chinatsu's route is an instance in which the sci-fi elements of Baldur's Sky has a profound effect on the character's personality. Her route takes this fact and goes all in, tackling Chinatsu's psychological state and her resulting actions. As a whole, Baldur's Sky addresses the political and social aspects of these futuristic concepts that the visual novel establishes, and as we explore deeper, the novel still remains to continuously keep the environment that the cast lives in deeply fascinating and engrossing. I felt really pitiful for Chinatsu by everything that's happened to her, and by the end, I was actually really glad for her by her route's ending, because being Chinatsu is actually suffering in this game. Originally, when the game was first released, Baldur's Sky was actually two games, Dive 1 and Dive 2. One of the features of the localized release of Baldur's Sky is that Dive 1 and Dive 2 are actually combined together. After you finish Chinatsu's route, you get introduced to the second half of the game, indicated by the change in the home screen menu and the opening sequence. The last three rounds are part of Dive 2. It is in Aki's route that we can start to feel the story pull itself together to create the larger big picture, as every route so far has been building up Ko's memories and present day information. Aki is Ko's second cousin, who he considers as his caretaking sister, an individual who lays around all day but is actually a very capable technological programming wizard. Aki is one of my favorite supporting characters from the other routes, mainly because Aki provides a sense of reassurance providing a safe haven and safe refuge from the real world events. Compared to the other routes where the events of Great Christmas ended up being a major plot point, we focus on Ko and Aki's relationship and Aki's social difficulties as an individual largely integrated with the cyberspace. In order to unlock the last two routes, you need to read the reminiscent section of the game, which is a full collection of Ko's school life. You don't really need to read this as it's the same content if you remember the flashbacks, so I spent a majority of the time skipping through this section. The problem here is that they threw in some new scenes that weren't initially covered by the flashbacks, and so I had to keep my eye on the story from time to time to check for new stuff, which I didn't appreciate. Makoto is the second to last route, and you probably already figured out where Makoto is in the present day. Makoto's route deals with her unique cyber illness and her relationship with her sister. What Makoto says will make you think twice about what you know so far and hints at a very deeper revelation, as she has one of the biggest connections to the larger truth, serving as a really good precursor to the final true route. As for the true final route, if you thought that the rest of the routes were pretty good, the true route just takes it to a whole nother level, accumulating everything that you know so far and spinning it in a whole different perspective. Baldur's Sky occasionally hints at this throughout the other routes, but not in the way that you expect. The true route is the biggest departure from the natural course of events because what happens in this route is nothing like the previous ones so far, because at this point you are collecting all the information that you've gamed up until this point all of your struggles, all of your blood, sweat, and tears, just to get to this point right here at the finale of Baldur's Sky. 
I wrote and made this video because I truly believe that you should play this game. Baldur's Sky is a god tier visual novel that stands out amongst all visual novels. This is a visual novel that took six years of dedicated work to bring over and it shows. I've complained about parts of the game, but in retrospect it's all minor issues that don't take away from the main experience, and at the end of the day, it's well worth the investment to spend the 75 plus hours on this piece of work. There's a lot of care put into this game, from the lovingly crafted characters, the unique cyberpunk visual flair, the deeply moving soundtrack, the meticulously thorough vision of the world, and the fun fast action gameplay. It's a visual novel that I'll stand by as one of my favorite visual novels I've ever experienced.